Hello, everybody. Welcome to problem two from quiz two, spring 23, math 302 here at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, this is really just a, a definition question, right? We have a set S, we have an equivalence relation E on S, and we want to know what are the elements of the quotient set S mod E. So the quotient set is actually quite simple to uh, at least write down, right? Maybe maybe understanding it isn't obvious, but at least it's very simple to uh, write the definition. So S mod E in words equals the set of all E equivalence classes of S. Okay, so in symbols, we would say this consists of all equivalence classes of elements. Okay, so the form looks like an equivalence class of an element. And the condition here is, right, this x needs to be some element of s. So remember our notation here for the equivalence class of an element is we just put square brackets around it. Okay, and so this would tell us we take every single element of s, we form its equivalence class, we take the set of all those. Now, at first this may seem like you're not doing anything interesting. You're just putting square brackets around all the elements, right? Don't, don't you just get like way too many elements here? Uh, or I thought the whole idea was to kind of decrease the, the size of this thing. And this is where knowing that a set does not see repetitions is important. So let's just do a quick example to see what happens. Um, so uh, let's say our S is going to be the set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to define an equivalence relation. Uh, so E is going to be a subset of S cross S. Uh, in fact, what is it going to be? It's actually going to be this one. Uh, we're going to do uh, one, one, uh, and one, three, one, five, one, seven. And then I'm going to have 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, and 2, 8. Okay, I'll keep going. Uh, I'm going to have 3, 3. I'm going to have 3, 1. Of course, if it's an equivalence relation, I have to have symmetry. So having 1, 3 means I need to have 3, 1. Okay, and then I'll have 3, 5 and 3, 7. And then I have uh, 4, 4, right? Notice the first one, I'm always doing the reflexive one. Okay, then I want 4, 2, because I had 2, 4, and I'm going to have 4, 6, and I'll have 4, 8. And you might be seeing kind of the pattern here, right, what's actually happening, but I'll finish it, all right? 5, 5, then I'm going to need 5, 1, because I had 1, 5. I'll need 5, 3, because I had uh, 3, 5, and I'll need, I want 5, 7. Okay, then I'm going to have 6, 6, and then I'll have 6, 2, because I had 2, 6. I'll have 6, 4, because I had 4, 6, and I'll have 6, 6, uh, 6, 8, excuse me. Okay, then we'll have uh, 7, 7. All right, well, I had 1, 7, so I need 7, 1. I had 3, 7, so I need 7, 3. I had 5, 7, so I need 7, 5. And finally, I'll have 8, 8, and, well, I had 2, 8, so I need 8, 2. I had uh, 4, 8, so I need 8, 4. And I had 6, 8, so I need 8, 6. Okay, and that's going to be my E. And what you, I hope at this point, see, number one, it's an equivalence relation because, well, let's see. I have all of the reflexive pairs. Uh, I built everything up so I had symmetry. And then transitivity, ah, well, this is where, you know, in principle, you have lots and lots of things to check. So why is the transitivity going to work? Well, notice that I'm only ever pairing up odd numbers with odd numbers and even numbers with even numbers. And so if I'm looking for transitivity to hold, I would need to, for example, take an odd pair and then another odd pair. And then I would need to make sure that I get the resulting odd pair. But I have all possible odd pairs. And similarly, I have all possible even pairs. So transitivity is going to hold here as well. So what I'm going to do is show this partition by drawing some circles around points. So the odd ones I'll put in red, and the even ones I'll put in green. So there's only 
two equivalence classes that I actually get. There's the green class and the red class, the odds and the evens. So S modulo E is actually just equal to the greens, comma, the reds. Okay, those are the classes. Now, that's not the definition that I wrote up above, right? Definition said, okay, we should take all of the different classes. So let's write it that way. So I could take here the, uh, let's start with red here, the class of one, comma, the class of two, comma, the class of three, comma, oops, the class of four, the class of five, the class of six, oh, so many, why didn't I stop at six? All right, uh, the class of seven, and the class of eight. Okay, so it looks like I still have eight elements, but we really don't, because what is the class of one? The class of one is all of the red circled numbers, one, three, five, seven. What about the class of three? The class of three is all the red circled numbers, one, three, five, and seven, right? It's everything that is related to three. So in fact, all of these, one, three, five, and seven are equal. And similarly, two, four, six, and eight, all of those classes are equal. So in fact, I could just write this as the class of say one and the class of say two. And that would give me everything. All right, so if you like one comma two, is a set of representatives for this quotient, all right? Or remember, the other word we had for this was transversal. Okay, so there we go. That's probably a much longer explanation than you needed as to what uh, S mod E is, but hopefully you get some value out of it. All right, we'll see you next time with problem number three.